Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. This is New Music Finds episode number 20 and it's where I like to collect all my new music purchases from the past week and present it to you. I get it from places like local record stores, online retailers, Amazon, eBay, and more. For this past week, it was a particularly good week of well-rounded mixes and releases, uh, new regular uh, music releases that came out, but as well as UCDs such as Rare and Lost Gems, and plus I even found a reissue that has been one of those really expensive, hard to find ones that's now finally becoming available. But before we dive into all that, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with New Music Finds, episode number 22. And as always, we kick things off with brand new releases. I've got two of them. I picked them up through eBay. First one up comes from Resurrection Kings, Skygazer. Just came out on July 16th. It's the second studio album from these guys. They're a super group featuring Craig Goldie on guitars coming from Dio. And then we've got Vinny Apice on drums coming from Dio and Black Sabbath. Chaz West is on vocals. He fronted Bonham. Later era version of the band, they put out a third album. It was the Jason Bonham Band at that time, but he did front that group. And then we've got a new member that's in the band here, Alessandro Del Vecchio. And this guy is on bass and keyboards. If you know anything about the Frontiers label and different projects, this guy seems to be involved in so many different bands. And once again, my only sort of complaint into this album here is that he sort of affects the sound the way he does on all of them. He is, has, has a very typical style of co-writing that he does, uh, keyboard playing and so forth. He's the producer. He's also the person who mixed and engineered the album. While I very much like the sound of this, it's very close to classic Dio sounding style music with Craig Goldie on guitars. The mix on this is very muddy. Um, the sound of this here is not as bright and polished as we typically know from these style recordings and or the last album. So that'd be my only complaint on this. Otherwise, I do very much enjoy this new album. All right, next one up comes from Gary Kemp in Solo. Also came out on July 16th. Uh, this one here is previous bands are uh, Spandau Ballet that we really know him from, but I was most interested in him from the release that you see behind me over here, Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. So big fan of Pink Floyd, as you guys know. I went out and saw Nick Mason and his band performing those old classics, and Gary um, was you know, the guitar player and vocalist for that. So very interested in what this would be. Uh, it does have elements of that ethereal Pink Floyd sound style to it, but it's far more modern than what I was sort of anticipating. Definitely leaning much more towards his Spandau Ballet roots and those pop elements that are from there. So for me, at least as a Pink Floyd fan, it's a much more inconsistent listen. I'm sure people that are fans of the Spandau Ballet sound will very much appreciate this. But if you're like me and you're a Pink Floyd fan going into this, definitely check this out before picking it up. All right, and then there was one reissue that came out, picked it up from Amazon, and it's Alan Parsons On Air. Original 1996 release for this one here. It's his second solo album. But if you're counting all of the Alan Parsons Projects releases, it's actually the 14th studio album overall by him. And this one here, because it came out in 1996, it's actually the 25th anniversary of this. So kind of a cool tie in here for the reissue of it. It's out on the music on CD label, which I really like. They're doing a lot of cool reissues and something like this. They have taken something that's become a very hard to find original release on CD and they're now making it available. So this album, I've seen this go for some several hundred dollars on eBay before. I've never really wanted to shell out that kind of money for this. And now I don't have to, I was able to pick it up. And I have to say, really, really enjoying it. It definitely leans right in towards that Pink Floyd vibe that uh, you guys all know that I love so much. All right, and then I went to my local record store and I found seven used uh, gems here that I wanna run through with you. I went to my local record store, Academy Records. You guys have known I've given them a shout out before. They're definitely well worth checking out if you're in Manhattan. And first one up, really cool one here, The Doors, Bright Midnight Live in America, 2000 release. And as you guys see, it's in a jewel case here. Unlike the one that came out on Rhino Records here in America, 
which is the cardboard diggy pack. And as you guys all know, I don't really care for diggy packs. They get beat up a little too easy. This one here in the jewel case, the reason for that though, is it's a European special release, limited edition. It still features 14 songs spread out through eight concerts. Really, really great stuff from the doors, their archives. They created this label just to release this material here. And this one in particular, very, very good stuff. All right, next up, we've got Fish. Sunsets on Empire. This was a 1997 solo album from him, fifth overall. Uh, of course, coming from Marillion, former vocalist for them. Left the band in 1988 to go solo and do this. Uh, one of the things I found fascinating by this particular release here is it's actually got six songs that are co-written by Steve Wilson of Porcupine Tree. So you guys know that I've been interested in these remixes that Steve Wilson has been doing for bands like Yes, Jethro Tull, and other great uh, classic rock prog artists like that. So Steve Wilson here joining up with Fish from Marillion. Really interesting there and definitely worth checking out in my opinion. Very surprised by this. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. All right, next up we've got Dave Mason, The Best Of, originally released for this on vinyl was 1981, but the CD itself, 1986 release on it. So the solo material on here is a collection of stuff from the former Traffic guitar player. And he also fronted Fleetwood Mac in 1995. You can see the album down there at the bottom. Uh, the album itself was called Time. And so this one here, the best of itself, spans from 1970 to 1980 and features 10 tracks on it. All right, next up, we've got Huey Lewis and the News Sports 1983, third studio album overall. Uh, generated four top 10 hits when it came out. The Heart of Rock and Roll, Heart and Soul, I Want a New Drug, and If This Is It. The album itself ultimately went seven times platinum here in the US, but it's just one of those really great solid listens. If you know those four hits on here, the rest of the songs on this are all in that same vein. So it's a really fun listen to just put in, kick back and listen to it because even the ones that weren't hits on here are really just that good. All right, next up, moving into The Bangles, Everything from 1988, third studio album from these ladies at the time, but it was the last album for 15 years until 2003's Doll Revolution. There were two big hits that came off of this, and I didn't know this at the time, but popping this album on and hearing those, it was really great and a nice surprise because I thought this was a later era album where they didn't have hits, but they had the song In Your Eyes, which went to number five, and Eternal Flame, which went all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. So. Even though it was their third and final album at the time, still had two really big hits on it. All right, next one. This one might seem out of left field, like something I wouldn't have here. But if you watch some of these other uh, episodes that I've done and you see or saw things, I should say, like uh, Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack, you're going to understand this. Pointer Sisters, Breakout, 1983 release. So this is not the 1984 remix version. This is the original 1983 album of this. But... 10th studio album overall from the sisters and while the band itself is considered as an R&B group this one here is the full-on 80s dance pop at its best and just listen to the hits that are on this so you got jump for my love I'm so excited and the reason I was referencing the Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack Neutron Dance which comes from the soundtrack is on here and so as I mentioned the 1984 reissue of this is a remixed version of it where they actually went in and took those dance hit versions of these songs replaced them so that it would tie in more to what the public was hearing at that time but i actually like the earlier version of this the one that has it in my opinion as a much more consistent lesson on here in the original mix to the album so the 1983 i was really glad to be able to find a version of that all right, and the, the last release that I picked up as a used gem from my record store was kind of a cool find. It was something I didn't know about, so it was new to me. Revenge, One True Passion, 1990 release, debut studio album, and it was a short-lived side project by New Order bassist Peter Hook. So I didn't know anything about this. It was $1.99. I just opened it up to check it out and see what it was, kind of a thing. And then I did some searching on it to find out that it actually featured New Order's bass player on it. That was a pretty cool find there. And so this was actually recorded during their hiatus from 1989 to 1990, New Order's hiatus when I say that. And while it's described as industrial rock mixing with house hybrid music, 
Um, I definitely find it much more in vain with the New Order stuff. It's not quite as industrial as they make it out to sound, but very good stuff. And I'm glad to have found it. It's something new for my collection, something that I didn't know was out there. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you are a New Order fan, do check this out. It's a really, really great project that they did. And of course, very short lived. So there you go. That is New Music Finds episode number 20. We got new releases, rare albums, and lost gems for you guys to check out. Uh, do check the description below and uh, check out the related videos uh, to this. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed this, please share this out on social media. Help spread the word that way. I'd also appreciate it. Have a good day. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.